Gospel of the Lord, September the 22nd, 2013, Luke 16, 1, 13. Jesus also said to his disciples, There was a rich man, and he had a steward, who was denounced to him for being wasteful with his property. He called for the man and said, What is this I hear about you? Draw me up an account of your stewardship, because you are not to be my steward any longer. And the steward said to himself, Now that the master is taking the stewardship from me, what am I to do? Dig, I am not strong enough. Go begging, I should be too ashamed. Ah, I know what I will do to make sure that when I am dismissed from office, there will be someone to welcome me into their homes. Then he called his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? One hundred measures of oil, he said. The steward said, Here, take your bond, sit down, and quickly write fifty. To another he said, And you, sir, how much do you owe? One hundred measures of wheat, he said. The steward said, Here, take your bond and write eighty. The master praised the dishonest steward for his astuteness. For the children of this world are more astute in dealing with their own kind than are the children of light. And so I tell you this, use money tainted as it is to win your friends and thus make sure that when it fails you they will become they will welcome you into eternal dwellings anyone who is trustworthy in little things is trustworthy in great anyone who is dishonest in little things is dishonest in great if you are not trustworthy with money that tainted, that tainted thing who will trust you with genuine riches and if you are not trustworthy with what is not yours, who will give you what is your very own? No servant can be the slave of two masters. He will either hate the first and love the second, or be attached to the first and despise the second. You cannot be the slave both of God and of money. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are hearing a very painful truth. In this world, where there are so many songs about money, money makes the world go round, the world go round, that's what they sing, but it's a big lie out of them. We all want to have money. Even many priests and bishops would say, well, a little bit of money is not, is not bad. And even, for example, Saint Teresa, uh, Saint Teresa the Great, of Jesus, Saint Teresa of Jesus, used to say that she needed some money to make the the works, to do the funding of her convents, and it's true. We need the means, but what we hear here in the end is the very the most important thing not to fail to have in our hearts. You cannot be the slave of both God, God and money. What is happening here in this lengthy gospel as it is presented to us today by Jesus? There is the story of this rich man who has a steward and has been an administrator who is not very faithful. And when he tells him that he is going to end in that job, he is thinking, what am I going to do? I don't want to work. I don't want to go begging. And then he thinks... He wants to make sure that someone welcomes him in his house. So, again, he goes against his master again and reduces unlawfully the debt of each of his debtors, expecting to be welcome out of that. We know for sure now that if that was the case, Perhaps the people would be happy to have the reduced debt, but they certainly would know what kind of person this steward was, and they would not welcome him in their houses. And it's exactly what the Lord is saying here. The dishonest steward, for his astuteness, the children of this world are more astute in dealing with their own kind than are the children of light. The children of light, those who have been touched by the Holy Spirit. 
tend to be simpler, tend to be really not like the people who love money. People who love money are not trustworthy. People who love money, because you see, money as a master is really bad. It will enslave you and make you do things, all kinds of things that you don't really want. But because you are the slave of money, it doesn't matter to you, I mean not to you, but to that who is slave of, of the money, it doesn't matter even to kill. It doesn't matter to rob, because what they want is the money. And the Lord is telling us twice, the money tainted as it is. This is the central part. Use money tainted as it is to win your friends, to win your friends. And thus make sure that when it fails you, when money fails you, you will, they will, they, your friends that you made, will welcome you into eternal dwellings. And then again, he will say it again. By the end of it, it says, if then you are not trustworthy with money, that tainted thing. He says it twice, money. Why is money tainted? Because in the process of accumulating money, many injustices are, are done. And if we have a hard heart, if we have a hard mind, we will not mind doing whatever against anyone, even ourselves, to accumulate the money. We have to use the means as just that, just the means to get to where we want to, not further, just to where we want to. If we fail to recognize that money is just a means, and we put it as many of our generation has done, like a god, we are sure to lose the true god we are sure to lose ourselves. But if we are smart, especially if we pray that the light of God might shine in our minds and in our hearts, we will realize that money is just this means. That if the Lord has blessed us with intelligence, with the means, with the work, with the business to do money, it's not because, because he despises money by itself. If we are, if you are blessed with money, help your friends, make friends, not only your friends, but especially those in need. Look for the poor ones and share a bit of your wealth that those poor ones will pray for you and will welcome you in the eternal house of our Father. Let us humbly ask the Lord that He might teach us better in our hearts to love Him above all things, and especially to love Him above money. God bless you all, brothers.